What can you do when people exploit your trust or take advantage of you or just let you down? I never want to lay eyes on that man again. I've been taking on big businesses for more than a decade, but I've always been acutely aware that there's a whole lot of people who are operating under the radar. Just totally fell for it, hook, line and sinker. One of the things I see over and over again is how powerless people feel. I had no reason not to just believe what he was saying. I'm a consumer too. I know what it's like, and I know how incredibly frustrating and how incredibly upsetting it can be. It's about showing people that there are consequences and there are ways that people can fight back. This week, I'm investigating a trader who sells log cabins. I'm going to meet three customers who've paid him between 40 and 55,000 euro each and have been left feeling upset and disappointed. If you buy a product that just isn't up to scratch or isn't fit for purpose, that's incredibly difficult for anybody. But especially if you have invested a lot of your hopes and your money into it. I'm traveling to meet Joy Logan and her mother, Evelyn. They had a dream to create a care farm for children with special needs. Joy knew exactly what she wanted to create the perfect environment. And the focal point of the farm was to be a log cabin with a separate stable. My son has autism, so I knew exactly what I wanted and what would benefit the kids. I looked up about log cabins and I thought aesthetically they would look beautiful in this okay. area. I googled and, um, and there was a few log cabin businesses. Trevor Watson, Beaver Log Cabin stood out for me. And did you have a clear idea of what you were looking for? As I said, I showed him the photographs and explained in quite a lot of detail and everything because it's something that my mother and I would be quite passionate about. So this is the main area of the cabin. OK. As you can see, it's all watermarked here. OK, so that's all damp. And all the corners would be the same. It was supposed to be up to the high spec of actually, with the insulation and everything. So at least you have heating here. We got the, all the paraphernalia for heating, but it's never been switched on, it's never worked. So how do you keep the kids warm and yourself warm in the wintertime? We basically have space heaters everywhere, like blow heaters, and they're still wearing their jackets. And I mean... All the way through the day? Yeah. And is it fully insulated? It doesn't seem to be. <laughs> when we put on the heating, the air, it seems to float out somewhere. But you paid him 46,000 euro. The quote Joy received from Trevor Watson included plumbing and heating at a cost of €5,000. It also stated that Joy's cabin was a twin-skin, fully insulated cabin with 44mm wall thickness. And on the current Beaver Log Cabins Northern Ireland website, it says that its bespoke cabins accommodate the very best insulation material. All our twin-skin walls are double-skin inside as well. So why is it that in Joy's cabin, all the heat seems to be escaping? We contacted Trevor Watson and were told that Joy's Heating wasn't connected because the company didn't have staff qualified to do so. And yet, two texts from Trevor to Joy in November 2013 and February 2014 say he's sending a gas man to her cabin. Joy believed the purpose of these visits was to connect her heating. It wasn't until it got hit by the winter that we really started noticing the cracks, it was just horrific. And then trying to get him on the phone to come out and fix that or with the plumbing. I'm not a carpenter, but I can tell that's not the best fitting door in the world. That's not very well insulated. No. Or this, or this, or any of this. So all the heat is just... When it rains, all the water comes in underneath the door. Yeah, I'm just looking at it. It's identical yes. to the indoor they're, they're doors. Indoor, the same as the indoor doors. Like the same handles. The quote from Trevor Watson also included decking, which was never provided, and a tower and swings that were to be given free of charge for the children. Sadly, they didn't arrive either. I'll show you the bathroom. Right, there's cracks all over the place. There's cracks here and here. There's a massive crack there. If you look at the bathroom, it's leaking. We commissioned an engineer's report to look at Joy's cabin, and the findings were very troubling. It mentions things like not enough insulation, no proper frame stability, timber joints filled with silicone, the external door not being rigid enough, and the building being suitable as a garage. Not a great endorsement for what was built. 
The 46,000 euro yeah. that you had to spend, where yeah. did that come from? Like, this is all my mother. Her pension, her life savings on this build. We don't have any more money. This was it. This is where the money is. We have nowhere else to go. We can't get loans or anything like that. This is it. So you've been involved in the process from the start. You paid for it. How, how, do you, how has it made you feel? Oh, um, it, it took away the joy at the start. Because, mm -hmm. like, when you come over to the cabin, you expect it to be nice and dry. It's quite damp and devastating. At the moment, we, we just can't. have to make do with what we have. Our money is going for our kids. I think what's most upsetting about this particular story is this family spent their life savings, 46,000 euro, on building both a business that they could pass on to their son who has autism, as well as building a care farm that would help an awful lot of other very vulnerable children. They really do not seem to have gotten the cabin they hoped for, and they certainly don't appear to me to have received value for their 46,000 euro. There's another cabin I want to visit that was built by Trevor Watson. I'm going to get an architect to have a look at it for me. But first, I want to talk to the woman who had it built because she feels really let down by what's happened. Due to the nature of our next participant's work, she has asked us not to reveal her identity. So how did you come into contact with Trevor Watson? Um, I came across his website, Beaver Log Cabins Ireland. I was looking for something to live in because I was renting. I wanted something that would benefit me, that I wouldn't have to pay rent anymore. Trevor built the cabin in 2013, but before it was finished, there was an objection lodged with the planning department. No request for planning permission had been made by the customer, and so she was forced to apply for retention planning. This was granted, but only on condition that it be used as a gym and for domestic storage. Her hopes of living here were shattered, but her problems didn't end there. It doesn't look structurally amazing. No, it's not. Um, we've had fierce problems with the windows and the doors leaking. There's gaps appearing in the walls. It doesn't look great, to be honest. I'd like to find out a bit more about the quality of this cabin, so I'm going to talk to an expert who can fill me in. David Moran is an architect who's an authority on wooden structures. David, how are you? Hi. Nice to see you. How are you? Thanks for coming Lovely around. Lovely to meet you. What would your first impression be? I don't see any ventilation, room vents or vents in the windows. OK. Typically, there'd be ventilation either at the top of the window, there or there, or at higher level in the wall, there'd be a vent. Now, that's obviously to stop moisture buildup inside. That's to allow the moisture buildup inside evaporate out, yeah. basically. A bit curious as to what this is in terms of structure. Why are there two layers? Why are they that distance apart? But you'd imagine there's some kind of insulation, maybe? Inside, I'd say that is the structure that's running right through. Okay. And if there, if there is insulation in this area, it is blocking an area that I would think would need to be ventilated, unless it's only partial insulation, which is very, very small for insulation. Typically, in any log construction, there'd be a hole right down the middle of this. OK. And there'd be a big threaded bar going through it. There'd be a bolt at the bottom, and there'd be a bolt at the top. And that's for the purposes of compressing them together. OK, and is there a way you can check that? Um, well, there is, yes. Uh, Typically, you put your you, if you put your hand under either of these, there's nothing actually compressing the timber there. Even I'd know to tighten that. Yeah. So it's just decorative. Not even decorative. I'd expect at least one threaded bar at each corner. So we check the others, will we, just to be okay. sure? There's no there's no threaded bars in this corner at all. Hang on. So there's no bars holding these slats. There's no bars holding them, compressing them together. No. Nothing. Nothing. So there's no bolt in this either. Yet essentially, if I was strong enough, I could lift that. OK. And it would come, it would come apart. Now, I'm not strong enough, but the wind is. Yeah. I don't feel any vents there. So it would, it would appear that there are no vents. Speed of growth of, for instance, dry rot in Ireland, that piece of timber could be destroyed in five years. Five years? Yeah. And it costs her 60,000 euro? Mm -hmm. This cost 60,000. That's how much she spent on it all told. Yeah. There's no vent. There's no room ventilation here. Okay. It feels it, and I can't see it. And that absence of ventilation is what's making it feel so stiflingly hot. Yeah. You can see some staining here on the windowsill. Condensation, moisture, ingress. And I'm just looking at the gaps as well. 
that gap is a concern. That's like the tongue of a, a tongue and groove system there, and I can nearly get my finger in. So if that opened up any more, we'll see into that wall. We'll see right through. There's a gap there, there's a gap there. This is the logs actually moving apart. OK. And again, if without the, the bars that are supposed to be in the side, that would be aggravated. But this one concerns me quite a lot. I don't see how that roof is tied down to the structure. And I'm just wondering, is the roof actually pulling that wall up? Worst case scenario, what do you think could happen? Well, the worst case scenario, if a roof isn't tied down to the walls in the storm, the roof can blow off completely. You're joking. David Moran clearly raises significant questions about this structure. Trevor Watson claims that this cabin is strapped with metal rods for extra support due to the height of the unit. There is a clear conflict between what we are being told by Beaver Log Cabins on the one hand and our architect on the other. The original plan for the cabin also included a kitchen designed by Trevor. I chose to get him to do the whole lot. He was supplying the appliances and designing a kitchen for me, yeah. and he'd fit the whole lot. So he had asked for the money for the kitchen, 5,700. He wanted 5,700 for yeah. the kitchen. I gave him the money, and then the planning objection came in. So he never supplied the kitchen or returned my money. So he just took the 5,700 euro yes. for the kitchen, didn't put in a kitchen, no. and didn't give you back the money? No. This lady paid for the kitchen in October 2013 and has asked Trevor to return the 5,700 euro on several occasions with no success. After we made contact with him, he claimed that this customer owed him money for additional work and for missing parts which had to be replaced. He said that her funds had been retained on that basis. She does not accept his explanation. So you thought you were going to spend 20 grand on the whole thing and you ended up spending more than 60,000 euro. And of that 60,000 euro, around 50,000 went directly to Trevor Watson? That's correct. And what do you have to show for that? A shed. In part two, we meet another unhappy customer of Trevor Watson. It could have been nice. So this doesn't look good. We visit his showroom with hidden cameras. And finally, I get to meet him in person. Connor Pope is my name. I'm from TV3, and I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. I'm on the trail of Trevor Watson, whose company Beaver Log Cabins Limited charged two customers over €45,000 each to provide them with log cabins. But having spent such large amounts of money, both women feel there are serious questions to be asked. If you look at the bathroom, it's leaking. Issues including water leaks, gaps in walls, insulation and heating systems have arisen. That's not very well insulated. No. Or this or this. As well as concerns over ventilation. Speed of growth of, for instance, dry rot in Ireland, that piece of timber could be destroyed in five years. The one thing I know for sure about Trevor Watson at this stage is that he's left behind at least two really unhappy customers. But I think it's important that I find out a little bit more about how the guy does business. What I'm seeing here 